Hello, I'm Sandy Chidup. I'm a professor of climate studies at the University of Edinburgh, and I'm also the university's executive lead on climate responsibility and sustainability. My own research revolves mostly around tropical climate and tropical coral reefs. Climate change is driving an interlinked humanitarian and ecological catastrophe before our eyes. And I used it in the, the present tense because it isn't some abstract phenomenon that may happen in the future. It's actually happening now. If you're to say more personally, why does it matter to me? Well, I've spent most of my research career working in the tropics, uh, working on tropical coral reefs. They're the most biologically diverse marine ecosystem by far, and they're also exceptionally sensitive to climate change. So before my eyes and my lifetime, I've seen a catastrophic decline in the health of these coral reefs. And they also support the lives and livelihoods of about a billion of the world's poorest people. And so it becomes something that you can't help but feel very engaged with. Um, you know, first obvious question is, well, what's Scotland got to do with the, the tropics or coral reefs? Well, actually, the answer is quite a lot, and it's interesting there. So first of all, there's a very long track record of work on the science of understanding climate change, but also on the science of coral reefs. It goes right back to Darwin. I think another distinctive feature about Scotland, the UK in general, but Scotland definitely, is that we're exceptionally international in our perspectives. And if you're thinking of it from a university's point of view, we've got alumni and students uh, and former staff that are truly globally distributed. So we have these trusted and trusting networks uh, that allow us to work um, throughout the tropical areas where there's corals and coral reefs and gain some really useful insights that uh, come from uh, that working in partnership. And then finally, we come from a country that's got a very progressive policy uh, context for climate change. And this helps us because it's effectively taken the politics out of climate change to a very large degree. There's no big political party that's standing on an anti-climate change agenda. So again, that provides the consistency that allows us to work as a community towards addressing these longer term goals. Well, let me emphasize to start off with that there aren't any major gaps in the evidence when it comes to whether or not climate change driven by human activities is a reality. We know that beyond any reasonable doubt. Where I think that we could usefully have more evidence is much more looking at the local or regional uh, effects of climate change. So for example, extremes. We're understanding, we understand more of that now, but um, there's still work to be done. Uh, what can we anticipate about the likelihood of future extremes in, in droughts, in floods, in cyclones, uh, other major events which impact uh, on people and on ecosystems uh, and on our health and food security? And then what I'd say from there is it's understanding also that there's no simple global answer to this, that the answers become very context uh, specific. So to answer these questions, uh, the answer to these questions and what a context appropriate uh, adaptation uh, would look like in South Africa is going to be different from South America. It's going to be different to Muir House. It's going to be different to China. So I'd like to see it play out that it's uh, seen to be equitable. So those who are most responsible for climate change are seen to be playing a leading role in addressing it. Um, I'd also like to see us move somewhat from a narrative of climate change being a burden, something that uh, we feel heavy about uh, having to address, to seeing it as an opportunity. So although the consequences of climate change are dire, addressing it successfully comes with some huge benefits. It means a more healthy society, a more equitable society. It means increased food and water security. It means better air. Uh, it means improved livelihoods. So there's a lot of positives there. And I think helping move that narrative from um, one of uh, doom and gloom and negative into um, seeing the positives 